the Hollywood Radio Theater. The Hollywood Radio Theater. Adaptations of famous motion pictures with Hollywood's greatest stars. Here is your host, Frank Brzee. Greetings again, ladies and gentlemen. When the average man starts out in the morning for his average job, he may sometimes hope for an escape from the routine he knows to what he thinks might be a glamorous adventure. Our play, Pitfall, is the story of such a man who, through the accident of a single mistake, stepped across a narrow boundary separating his world from the world of danger, violence, and death. We have the same stars who were in the popular screen success, with Dick Powell as our average citizen, Elizabeth Scott as the girl who completely disrupts his way of life, and Jane Wyatt as his wife. And now, the first act of Pitfall, starring Dick Powell as Johnny, Elizabeth Scott as Mona, and Jane Wyatt as Sue, with Raymond Burr as MacDonald. <laughs> The Forbes live in a suburb of Los Angeles. Typical family, husband, wife, and nine-year-old son. Exactly the sort of family living exactly the sort of life that people classify as that good old middle-class average. Johnny, come on, your breakfast is on the table. Where else would it be? Hmm? Oh, nothing, Sue, nothing. Morning, Dad. Hi. Don't forget, you're going to give me five dollars. Five dollars. Oh, don't you remember, dear? His school's raising money for a summer camp. Well, the way prices are these days, the kids better start raising money for us. Dad, you promised. All right, all right, here. Just make sure you don't spend it all on women. Hey, Tommy! Tommy! Oh, that's Henry. I gotta get going. Anything you want me to do today, Dad? Yeah. Until my wrench uncle dies, stop growing. Bye, Mom. Goodbye, dear. Hope the spelling's better today. Bye, Dad. Bye. You better finish breakfast, Johnny. It's getting late. Uh, so what? What? I said, so what if I am late? Oh, nothing. I just thought you'd like to know. Oh, let's don't go to work today. Let's let's go fishing. Oh, fine. Let's pick Tommy up and get in the car and just keep going. Mm, some other time. Thanks all the same. You think the world would stop if we did? You think the Olympic Mutual Insurance Company would go out of business if I didn't walk through that door at exactly 9 o'clock every morning? You never can tell. Oh, Sue, you were voted the prettiest girl in the class. I was voted the boy most likely to succeed. Something should happen to people like us. Well, something did. We got married. And I had a baby. I never did hear what happened to you. Hmm. No fishing, huh? Well, maybe next week. So what time will you be home, dear? Now, why do you ask me a question like that? You know to the second what time I'll be home. I leave the office at exactly three minutes after five. It takes four minutes to walk to the parking lot and exactly 32 minutes to drive home unless I hit a couple of stop signals and I'm kissing you on the cheek at exactly 5.39. Old man routine, getting you down again? Oh, uh, I feel like a wheel within a wheel within a wheel. You and 50 million others. Backbone of the country, darling. Average American. Oh, but I don't want to be an average American in the backbone of the country. I want someone else to be the backbone and hold me up. Oh, uh, goodbye, Sue. Hey, wait a minute. I'm getting a little bored of that kiss on the cheek, too. I think you can do better than that. Oh, sorry, baby. Thanks. That's more like it. Well, let's have a better mood when you come tonight, huh? Oh, uh, I'll give it all I got trying. See you at 5.39. And Johnson said a meeting there not the details next Friday. I, I'd better get back to my desk. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Ed. Oh, don't forget, you and Sue are having dinner with us tonight. Oh, is that tonight? Oh, of course it's tonight. Ed, what did we do a week ago tonight? Oh, we ate dinner, played bridge. Two weeks ago tonight. Two years ago tonight. You mean we're in a rut? Eh, six feet deep. Ed, let's revolt. When the girls bring out the cards tonight, let's stand on our constitutional rights. <laughs> if you want to, sure. Maggie. Yes, Mr. Ford? Bring in the file on the Continental Finance Company, will you? Oh, and uh, tell McDonald I can see you now. Now, sit down, McDonald. Well, what do you got? You know, my boss doesn't believe in hiring private detectives who can't get our money back. Tell your boss to relax. 
I've located about 4,000 bucks. Smiley had it well hidden. Where? With a girl named Mona Stevens. Here. Here's her address. 427 North Stockton. Oh, nice work, man. No strain. You know, we're still on the hook for plenty. Smiley worked for Continental Finance in our outfit, bonds all their employees. He was bonded for 10000 We want as much of it back as possible. Now, about this girl. Did you uh, talk to her? Yeah. Yeah, when I wasn't busy just looking at her. I don't blame Smiley for robbing his company. She's worth it. Smiley's in jail. I wonder if he thinks she's worth it. What does she do? Oh, she's a model. Department stores, mostly. You know, hats, dresses. Right now, she's looking for a job. Got 4000 Does she have the cash? Oh, nothing so crude. He bought her a lot of pretties. Fur coat, things like that. Does she know they were bought with stolen money? Smiley's been in the can for four months. I think she has a vague idea. You know something? I bet you never thought of me as a man who could fall in love. You'd be surprised how little time I have to think about you at all, Mike. This, uh, is Mona Stevens. She's quite a girl. Well, I'll have another talk with her today. Your part of the job's finished. I'll handle it from here. What's the matter with me handling it? You'd string it along just to see the girl again. What business is that of yours? If you want any more work from us, just stick to your detective agency. You, uh, you don't mind if I see her on my own time, do you? Not at all. Johnny, Johnny, when you see her, put in a good word for me, huh? Sure, sure, Mac. I'll see her this afternoon. I'll set up the whole thing for you. Come in, make yourself at home. Thanks. Put down your briefcase. Olympic Mutual Insurance Company, huh? Well, I don't need any insurance. Or do I? That man you sent to see me, that MacDonald. I've met some weird ones in my life, but that one nearly scared me to death. Oh, uh, MacDonald isn't with the company. He's a private detective we sometimes use. I don't care who he is. I'm sorry if he annoyed you. He shouldn't be let loose without a keeper. I suppose you're after the gifts Bill gave me? Bill Smiley. That's right. I don't imagine you'd believe me if I told you I didn't ask him for any of those things. It doesn't matter one way or the other. Doesn't it? I'd like a list of the articles if you don't mind. What will you do with them? Try to realize what we can. My company bonded Smiley for $10,000. We had to make good when he stole the money. I thought he was paying for that in jail. Unfortunately, the fact that Smiley's in jail doesn't give us back a penny. What if I decide to be difficult? Mm, then we'll be difficult. You'd have a hard time proving any of those gifts were bought with stolen money. We'd have a hard time, but we'd do it. Aren't you going to cooperate, Miss Stevens? I don't know. What good would it do Bill? Well, he's, uh, he's eligible for a pardon soon. Uh, if we recovered some of the money, it might help him. Then again, it might not. <sighs> Who cares? I don't want the stuff anyway. All right. I've got a fur coat. I've got a car. He made the down payment. I have a few dresses and an engagement ring. It's, it's not a very good diamond, but believe it or not, it's the first engagement ring I've ever had. And I'm quite fond of it. I'm sorry to have to do this. I don't think you are. I don't enjoy doing this sort of thing. No, I don't imagine you like it or dislike it. What do you mean? You're a little man with a briefcase. You go to work every morning and you do as you're told. So, here you are. And tonight when you're sitting around with the boys, you'll say, you should have seen the babe I ran into today. Not bad. But you know me, fellas. Strictly business when I'm on the job. Oh, that's what I'll say, hmm? That's the way I impress you? That's the way. And how should I be, Miss Steve? If you were a nice guy, you'd cry a little with me. You'd really feel sorry for a girl whose first engagement ring was bought by a man who was foolish enough to embezzle and stupid enough to get caught. And would I take the ring? I mean, if I were a nice guy? Sure. That's part of your job. But you'd act a little human about it. Hmm. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> At this time of day, according to statistics, Mr. Forbes, insurance men drink one and three-quarter highballs every day, but only after the sun goes down. You know, uh, I'd shoot myself if I thought I was turning into the sort of man you just described. What about the boat? Boat? Yes, the boat. You mean you and your playmate MacDonald didn't know about it? No. Well, you, you might as well make a complete haul. I'll show you the boat now. If you don't mind a trip down to the harbor. Now? <laughs> oh, of course. The fur coat, the dresses, my engagement ring. <laughs> don't worry, Mr. Forbes. They'll still be here when we get back. You, you'd rather not go, is that it? No, 
No, I think I'd like to go. You can leave your briefcase. I hardly think we'll be gone overnight. Well, there she is, Mr. Forbes. Like her? Hey, somebody's been kidding me. Crime does pay. What a boat. Oh, no, it, it's not that one. It's this one over here. Oh. <laughs> what did you expect, the Queen Mary? You should have seen her before I painted her. Well, you painted her? Oh, you, you'd be surprised what a little elbow grease will do when you're short of money. Of course, you wouldn't know about that. No, I work for an insurance company. Let's uh, take her out in the bay. You mean you want to take a ride? Why not? It's the company's time. Your gas. <laughs> Like another drink? No, thanks. I'm doing fine. You you never mentioned how you liked the boat. Oh, I liked it. You can get a lot of fun out of a beat-up launch. You're crazy about it, aren't you? I, I'd rather have it more than anything I've ever owned. But I, I, I like this, too, being here. Have you ever noticed, if for some reason you want to feel completely out of step with the rest of the world, the only thing to do is sit around a cocktail lounge in the afternoon? Why? Well, you... You have a few meditative drinks in the gloom, and, and you get everything figured out. Then you go out, and the sun hits you. <laughs> and you feel like something that's been drinking in a gopher hole. Tell me, how did you happen to get mixed up with someone like Smiley? As the girl said, just lucky, I guess. Anyway, he was too much in love with me. He wanted to buy things for me, and he didn't have the money. So, he went out and got some. Did he have to? Was it that important to you? No, but... But he didn't know that. I liked him mostly because he was nice to me. Very few men are. What do you care about me? Oh, just curious, I guess. <laughs> well, that's flattering. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I. Oh, I guess I'm out of practice. I'm a little unsure of myself whenever I crawl out of that briefcase. I'm, I'm sorry I let into you like that back at the apartment. You got your free drink, didn't it? Do you have to be someplace for dinner? Dinner? No. No, I don't have to be anywhere. <laughs> well, Mr. Forbes, here's to dinner together. Greetings, friend. I told your secretary I'd wait for you here. You want to see me about something special, McDonald, or do you just like to sit in my chair? Why the chill? No chill. I've got a lot of work to do. I, uh, just been looking at this report on your desk. A list of the things you recovered from Mona Stevens. Yeah? You must be slipping, Johnny. What about the boat? Boat? What boat? The boat Smiley bought for her. Oh, I, uh, I must have missed it. I didn't know she had a boat. She's quite a girl, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I got another job for you, Mag. Fine. I'm always glad to go to work. Yes, sir? Maggie, get the file on the hall case, will you? You know, Johnny, it's a funny thing. Take this Mona Stevens. Maybe she wouldn't appeal to most guys, but for me, she's got everything. The minute I saw her, it was just like that. I don't think she feels the same about you. Not from what she said yesterday. Oh, she's a little coy, that's all. But once she gets used to me, we'll make a great team. The whole case file, Mr. Ford. Thanks, Maggie. About Mona, Johnny. What did you find to talk to her about for such a long time yesterday? Look, Mac, are you interested in a new job or not? Why... Sure. Sure. Sorry. Can't let women interfere with business, can we? Here. Take a look at this file. Fairly cut and dry. Oh. Hello. Hello. Come on in. Just passing by, or did you go out of your way to make this call? I went out of my way. That's nice. How's the insurance business? And what's happened in the outside world that I should know about? Oh, a couple of things. We just took possession of your boat. Oh? MacDonald found out that I let you keep it. He could have caused trouble at the office. The man who walks like a mountain. He was pounding on my door last night till all hours. It's funny, isn't it? What? Well, I, I meet someone who's kind. He tries to do something nice for me. And almost immediately, he's in trouble. You, uh, you mean I'm nice? Yes, you've tried. You came over and told me personally. You could have phoned about the boat or, or just waited until I found it was gone. 
Well, don't worry about it. Why is it that, that you get attached to things that really don't make any difference? I don't know, but uh, I know how it is. I, I had a car once that was repossessed. I've had ten cars since then, but I've never liked any of them as well as that one. It was probably our first car. Yeah, it was. This was my first boat. Oh, I wish I could do something to help. Don't try, Johnny. You'll end up where Bill Smiley is. But, but thanks anyway for wanting to. You're funny. How? You're not at all like the man who walked in here about 24 hours ago. Well, from the way you described that man, I, I'd say anything would be an improvement. <laughs> Maybe that's what I mean. Oh, yes, Johnny. A big improvement. McDonald, what are you trying to do, adopt me? I've been waiting for you to come home. Look at the time, one o'clock. What's your wife say when you come home at one o'clock at night? She gets curious, especially about mugs who wait for me in the driveway. I just wanted to see you to make a report. That hall case, Johnny, I didn't get very far today. I was tailing someone else. You. Stay out of my business, Mike. I will, as long as it doesn't interfere with mine. Johnny, I told you I liked that girl. I don't care what you like or what you don't like. Quit meddling in my life. All right, Johnny. And don't ever let me catch you prowling around my home again. You won't. Maybe this will keep you home where you belong for a few days. And don't bother to tell me I'm fired. I quit. Our stars will return for Act Two of Pitfall in a moment. Hey, you remember that sinking feeling when the teacher was about to hand you your report card? How would your grades be today? Let me tell you how you can get all A's. Take part in the school advisory committee of your Dodd School. It makes recommendations and suggestions, evaluates the curriculum, and even keeps the community informed about what's new at school. Dodds is a quality school system, and you can help keep it that way through your school advisory committee. Attend its meetings regularly and speak up. That way the system hears what you have to say and at the same time lets you know more about the program. It's that kind of dialogue that keeps Dodds one of the finest school systems in the world. So participate in your school advisory committee meetings, and if you're elected to the committee, serve proudly. And now, here again is your host. Act two of Pitfall, starring Dick Powell as Johnny, Elizabeth Scott as Mona, and Jane Wyatt as Sue, with Raymond Burr as McDonald. Several hours have passed since John Forbes, bruised and bleeding from the beating McDonald administered, staggered into his house. To sue his wife, he told a story of being held up and robbed, and he's repeated the story to Dr. Adams, who's just finished taping his ribs. Well, that ought to hold you, Johnny. You'll be uncomfortable for a while. Uh, how long will I be laid up, Doc? Oh, a week or so. Those hold-up men, how much did they get? Well, I, uh, I was only carrying about $20. There are two of them, Dr. Adams. If there was only one, Dad would have knocked his block off. Huh, Dad? No, uh, sure, sure. Dad was a boxer in college. Well, I think he was wise to go into the insurance business. I still don't know why he won't let me call the police. Oh, well, we've been all over that, Sue. They, they won't be back. Maybe if they did, you and I could beat them up, huh, Dad? Why aren't you in school? It's Saturday. Then go out and play or something. Okay, Dad. If you're sure, you won't need me. This prescription, Sue. Better get to the drugstore this morning. Uh, what is it? A course in boxing. Don't worry, Sue. He'll live. Johnny, what really happened? Oh, I'll be up in a few days. Nothing to worry about. All right, dear. If you don't want to talk about it. Uh, call the office, Sue. Tell, tell Maggie I've got a bad cold, flu or something. <laughs> I'm certainly 
glad you're back, Mr. Ford. Sure you feel all right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, a little weak, maybe. You know what the flu can do. How are things here? Oh, like always, Mr. Ford. Here's all your mail. Phone calls? A list on your desk. That Miss Stevens called several times, but she said it was nothing important. Miss Stevens? The Smiley embezzlement case. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I'd better start waiting through the mail. go again, Johnny. Cocktails in the middle of the afternoon. I had to see you, Mona. It wasn't easy getting away. I, I have a job now. Oh, where? Franklin's, third floor, modeling dresses. How do you feel? Oh, uh, I had a sort of a cold, laid up for a few days. Yes, MacDonald told me about it. Oh. You don't think you'd overlook a chance to play hero in front of me, do you? I didn't come here to talk about MacDonald. That suits me. What will we talk about? Well, it couple of things I should have mentioned before and didn't. You mean like the fact that you're married? Mona, I... Would you like to know how I found out about it? Simple, Johnny. When I heard you were sick, I bought some food to take to you. I... I saw your wife. She, she was just leaving the house. What did you... Don't worry, Johnny. I pretended I had the wrong address. Right number. Wrong street. What do you want me to do? About what? You, of course. I've done something I'm terribly ashamed of. I'd like to make it up to you. If you think I'm going to compete with a wife and child, even I have more sense than that. What's going to happen to you? Do you care, really? Honestly, Johnny, aren't you a little relieved to get out of it this easily? This is a setup. The kind of girl you've always dreamed about. I'm going to let you off without an angle. Why? I don't know. But I'm not going to be nasty. Tell me, Johnny, what happens to men like you? If I had a nice home... I wouldn't take a chance with it for anything in the world. I'll do anything I can. Will you really? Then go home. Stay there. Okay. If that's the way you want it. If that's the way I want it. Have you any other ideas? Mona, wait a minute. No. No, I I'm leaving. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Your briefcase. You left it the other night. I'm sure you'd be lost without it. Goodbye, Johnny. <laughs> this, Pop. I didn't know you knew how to put model airplanes together. My boy, it's all a matter of patience and glue. We'll never forget that. Gee, you know all about everything, don't you? Just about. Hey, Dad, what did you do during the war? Anything I was told. I mean, where were you? Well, most of the time I was stationed in uh, Denver, Colorado. Oh, Colorado. Well, what's the matter with that? The Japs never got into Denver as long as your father was there. <laughs> Thanks, dear. Henry's father was decorated. Well, your father got a good conduct medal with four oak leaf clusters. Oh, really? Wait till I tell Henry. His father only got the silver star. Son, I don't think I'd mention that if I were you. It might sound like boasting. Yeah. We going on a trip this summer, Pop? No, I don't know. Why? I'm tired of this town all the time. Well, what's the matter with this town? People all over the world would like to live here. That's the trouble with your generation. You don't appreciate the things you have. You got one of the nicest homes in the block. Security. Not a thing in the world to worry about. Wow. Well, if you aren't the strangest husband I ever married, what's come over you? Contentment. And that's the secret of happiness, and don't you forget it. All right, I won't. Come on, I'll take you to a picture show. Movies? Oh, boy. Hey, Ma, get ready before he changes his mind. Now, here. Give me a minute, will you? I, I happen to want to kiss your Ma. Hey, easy, partner. There's a child around. Thanks, Mrs. Forbes. Come on, Tommy. Picture show. <laughs> Why don't you give up, MacDonald? I like you. I got plenty of patience. You're wasting your time. Maybe I feel like wasting my time. Let me alone, Mac. And don't ever come to Franklin's again. I've got a job and I want to keep it. I like to see you, Mona. I like to see you wearing those nice dresses. All right. Let me put it another way. I don't like you. I don't want you around. Suppose I'm just stubborn. Suppose I figure I know you better than you know yourself. I've asked you nicely, Mac. I can always call the police. I wouldn't call the police if I were you. You wouldn't want to cause Johnny and Mrs. Forbes any trouble, would you? Now, come on. Fix your face and we'll go somewhere nice and have a good dinner. Yeah, well, 
help you, sir? I'm looking for Miss Stevens. She's a model here. Oh, yes. The salon's over there to the right, sir. Thanks. Johnny? Hello, Mona. It's nice to see you. I, I, I hope I didn't inconvenience you asking you to come over here. No, not at all. I, I wouldn't have bothered you, only it was absolutely necessary. I know that. It's, it's MacDonald, Johnny. I, I don't know what to do about him. What's he done? Well, for a month now, he... Well, he follows me all the time. He, he just won't leave me alone. I even threatened to call the police. Well? Well, he said if I did, he'd go to your wife. He knows I don't want to cause you any trouble, and, and he's holding it over my head. Oh, so that's it. Well, I'm glad you told me. I know where he lives. I'll have a talk with him. Is everything else all right? Thanks. Everything's fine. Oh, I heard Bill Smiley will be getting out of jail soon. Probation. Yes? Well, that seemed to help, recovering some of those things he bought for you. About MacDonald. Be careful, Johnny. I will. He won't bother you anymore, Mona. Yeah, I'm coming. Oh, it's you, Johnny. Greetings, Frank. This is just a warning, Mac. If you're smart, you'll take it seriously. Leave the girl alone. And if I ever hear you threaten to do anything about my family again, I'll... I'll kill you. I mean that. So long, MacDonald. Since I was in the neighborhood of the county jail, Mr. Smiley, I thought I'd drop in and see you. Who are you? What do I mean to you? The name's McDonald. I was the insurance investigator when you took off with that ten grand. You don't mean a thing to me, Smiley. Only I don't like to see a guy get a bad deal. Who's getting a bad deal? I'm getting out on Friday. I just thought you should know that I met your girl. And I know all about Forbes. Forbes? What are you talking about? Forbes is the insurance man. Your girl kind of took a fancy to him while you've been in jail. How do you know so much? Anyway, so what if it's true? What am I supposed to do? Bust out of here? I didn't mean to get you so upset, pal. I guess I better go. Yeah, yeah, I guess you better. And leave me alone. How do I know you're not lying? You don't. So long, pal. Lucky you, Mona, getting the afternoon off. Going to the beach, huh? No, Terry, I, I thought I'd go downtown. I want to see Bill Smiley. Oh? I thought that was all over. Well, he's getting out tomorrow, and we have some plans to make. Sure, you're not making a mistake. Well, I, I've been thinking we might as well try making some sort of life for ourselves. But I thought there was someone else. As a matter of fact, there I... isn't anyone else. Be careful, Mona. You're too nice a girl to have anything else go wrong. Ten minutes, Miss Stevens. Okay, Smiley. This way. It's your girlfriend. Hello, Bill. Hello, Mona. Bill, ten minutes isn't very long, so I, I'd better get right to the point. You're getting out tomorrow. Who's Forbes, Mona? And who's this guy's been coming to see me? MacDonald. Who is he? MacDonald? He, he's been here. He's been driving me crazy. Look, Bill, let's not get tangled up in a lot of things that don't matter. Don't matter to who? Anything he tells you, Bill, don't pay any attention to Who him. is he? He swore at me because I wouldn't have anything to do with him. That's why he's bothering That's you. That's great. He's making a play for you. He comes to me with some story about somebody named Forbes, and I believe... Where's your ring? I, I gave it back, Bill. That's why you're getting out so soon. I gave all the things back. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I sit there sweating it out to give you some things and you take them back. Maybe that McDonald guy is right. He could be wrong, too. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But I'll know the answers tomorrow, won't I? I said I'll know the answers tomorrow. <laughs> I thought it might be a lot less conspicuous if we met here in the park, Johnny. <laughs> For a girl who asked you to stay away from me, I, I call you up an awful lot. That's all right. MacDonald been bothering you again? Not me. Bill. Bill Smiley. MacDonald's gone to the jail a few times to see him. I don't know how, but he gets MacDonald in. MacDonald used to be on the police force. Anyway, he's told Smiley about us. 
He's been needling him till Bill's almost out of his mind. Oh. Oh, I see. How long is this going on? I thought the whole thing was finished. If you don't mind, it isn't exactly easy on me either. What do you want me to do? I don't want you to do anything. I, I needed someone to talk to. I thought you were the one. When's Smiley getting out? Tomorrow. I, I don't want him to get in any trouble, Johnny, and... used to be on the police force. Anyway, he's told Smiley about us. He's been needling him till Bill's almost out of his mind. Oh. Oh, I see. How long is this going on? I thought the whole thing was finished. If you don't mind, it isn't exactly easy on me either. What do you want me to do? I don't want you to do anything. I, I needed someone to talk to. I thought you were the one. When's Smiley getting out? Tomorrow. I, I don't want him to get in any trouble, Johnny, and, and I don't want him to ruin anything for you. He won't ruin anything for me. I'm... I'm sorry I bothered you. I, I just thought you ought to know. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Ma. Well, let's get back to the car and I'll drive you home. No, I, I, I'll walk, Johnny. Good night. And that's the whole pretty story, Ed. Tonight when I met her in the park, she said she had to have someone to talk to. Well, so do I. And that's why I've come to you. I just don't understand you, Johnny. It's like a case of temporary insanity. You take a chance of losing your family, your job. For what? I've asked myself that time and again. But what do I do now? Do I tell Sue? Certainly not. If you think you're going to ease your conscience by making Sue's life miserable, you've got another thing coming. Suppose she finds out. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be better coming from me? You can't change anything that's happened by telling her. I assume you're still interested in keeping your marriage together. Well, you know I am. I'd do anything. Johnny, you ought to have your head beaten in. I already have. I don't know what to say. Do you want to go to the police? Oh, I'm not interested in telling this to anybody else. Well, what about taking Tommy and Sue and getting out of town for a while? What good would that do? I'd still have to face it sometime. No, oh, I don't know why I bothered to tell you. I don't either. Oh, you know I don't mean that. I'll do everything I can, Johnny, but give me some time to think about it, huh? You'd better get on home now. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Oh, how does it feel, Ed, to be a decent, respectable married man? Johnny. Yes, Sue? You want to talk about it? Talk about what? Whatever's on your mind. You've been reading the same page in that newspaper for an hour. Johnny, listen. If you have any troubles, they're half mine. Maybe you wouldn't want half of them. Well, whether I want them or not, I, I have a right to them. Besides, nothing's too tough for us. We won the war together. We brought Tommy through pneumonia. What is it, Johnny? So, I... I, I, I don't know how to tell you. I... Mother, mother, Daddy, Tommy! Daddy, Daddy. Tommy, what is it? It's all right, Tommy. We're coming. Tommy, it's all right, darling. You were just dreaming. Dreaming? Something was coming after me, coming in the window. Oh, but, Tommy, I've looked everywhere. Nothing out there at all. You just had a bad dream. Is this what you were reading before you went to sleep, those comic books? Where does she get the stuff? Grandma sent them to me. I'll burn them tomorrow. Mom, please. And while you're at it, sends Grandma a little, too. I'd, I'd love to, darling. It was your mother this time. Oh. <laughs> well, Chief, everything under control now? I think so. Dad? What makes a dream? Well, uh, you know how a camera works? Sure. It takes pictures. That's right. That's how the mind works. Evidently, from the day we're born, the mind takes pictures and stores them away. Now and then, one of those pictures comes loose in our sleep, and that's what makes a dream. So the trick is, take only good pictures and have only good dreams. I should try, Dad. Night. Good night, Tommy. Night, Mom. I'm sorry I scared you. Johnny, where are you going? Just down to the kitchen. You want me to fix you something? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. I, I'll just have a glass of milk. You know, sometimes I'm awfully proud of myself. Why? For giving Tommy such a wonderful father. He thinks you're the greatest guy on earth. He could be wrong. My son's never wrong. Johnny, before Tommy called us, you, you were going to tell me something. You know, I, I believe I could eat something at that. Uh, some eggs, maybe. So you, you won't talk? Hmm? Oh, uh, it, uh, it isn't important, Sue. It'll, it'll work out. Just uh, something at the office. Okay, Johnny. Whatever you say. 
What do you want to see him about? This is a jail, you know, not a hotel. Oh, I'm from the Olympic Mutual Insurance Company. He was involved in one of our claims. Oh, isn't that funny? He was let out at 8 o'clock this morning, not an hour ago. Oh? And he left with you. What are you talking about? Only at 8 o'clock this morning, you were a dark, fat guy, big as a house. And your name was McDonald. McDonald. Oh, okay, thanks. During the next 30 seconds, the average person will blink about a dozen times. It's nature's way of cleansing and lubricating the eye. The lids also protect eyes against dust and dirt. But in order to maintain good vision, eyes also need protecting in other ways. And yet two out of every three adults who don't think they need glasses have never had an optometric examination. Do you know for sure what condition your eyes are in? Isn't it worth finding out? A public service from the American Optometric Association. Vincent Price for direct deposit. You all know me. I'm a peaceful man. I wouldn't even hurt a fly. Hmm. But now I'm going to get out of line. I'm going to sign up for direct deposit. So I'll never have to stand in line with my government check again. I hate lines, don't you? I always want to... Mm, cut ahead. <laughs> With direct deposit, I don't have to. My money is deposited in my account every time, automatically. It's there, waiting for me. Helpless. Direct deposit frees up my time for my other interests, like my experiments. <laughs> Get direct deposit wherever you have your checking or savings account. Come on, get out of line. <laughs> A public service of the Ad Council and the Department of the Treasury's Financial Management Service. Come on, get direct deposit for your federal government check. Your host, Frank Brzee, returns to the microphone. Following our play, Miss Scott will join us for a curtain call. Now it's time for Act Three of Pitfall, starring Elizabeth Scott as Mona, Dick Powell as Johnny, Jane Wyatt as Sue, with Raymond Burr as McDonald. It's early afternoon now. Mona's taken a day off, waiting nervously in her apartment for the caller who finally arrives. Hello, Bill. Hi. Y you've been celebrating, huh? Yeah, I had a few drinks. Oh, I, I don't blame you. Tonight will really do the time. Yeah, yeah, tonight. I I didn't know what time you were getting out, or I, I would have been there to meet you. That would have been nice. Well, I, I guess if you don't want to kiss me, I can't twist your arm. Who says I don't? Yeah, that seemed like I didn't want to kiss you. Bill, what? what's that? There's something in your pocket. Oh, this? It's a gun. See, a friend of yours was kind enough to let it to if me. If they caught you carrying that, you'd be back in prison for good. You seem to get along without me. Don't believe everything you hear. You don't know MacDonald. How do you know him? He was after me, Bill. He'll do anything. Why does he want me to kill Forbes? He's jealous of him. Why? It's, it's all over now, Bill. It, it never amounted to anything, really. In order for something to be over, it's got to start first. We all make mistakes, Bill. You made one. For you. Don't tell me you did this for me. All right. I was wrong. Didn't you ever hear of forgiving anyone? You, I can forgive. The Forbes guy, no. He takes back the things I'm sweating out of jail wrap to get for you, and then he takes you. No, it wasn't that way at all. We'll see, Mona. Bill, please, please. Forget it. Come on, let's get out of here. almost over. Can't you read me another one? As soon as I finish this, you're going to go to bed. Now, uh, now where was I? No. Oh, yeah. Here we are. Uh, and then as they came around the corner, Ralph and Ted, the fun-loving Busby boys, came upon an ancient grizzled mountain lion. With perfect coordination, the two boys dove for shelter. Well, how 
come they didn't use their atom guns? Well, the Buzzy Boys don't have atom guns. They use slingshots. Some jokes. What's the matter with kids these days? The only kind of stories they like are trash about men from Mars, women getting tortured, and... No, oh, I'll get it. Oh, really, Tommy, if Dad's good enough to read to you, the least you can do is appreciate it. Hello? Johnny, this is Mona. Has Smiley been there? Yeah, no. Well, he got out today. Oh, I know that. MacDonald gave him a gun. He's been threatening to go over to see you. Well, where is he now? I don't know. We, we were in a little bar. He's been drinking. When I went to call a cab, he had left. I, I came right back to the apartment, but he isn't here. All right, I'll, I'll watch out for him. I don't want him hurt, Johnny. And I don't want him thrown back in jail. I'll take care of it. I'll come right over. You stay right where you are. But, Johnny, I know how to handle it. Now, you know you can't come over here. I'll call you later after I've talked to him. Who was it, dear? Uh, nobody. Hey, uh, Chief, uh, how would you like to go to a picture show? Now? You mean now? Oh, why? Oh, go on, go on. Get out of your pajamas and get dressed. Honey, are you out of your mind? It's almost 9 o'clock. Well, you can make the last show. Sure we can, Mom. Easy. I don't know what's come over you. I'm not going to any show tonight. Go up to bed, Tommy. Ma- oh, Chief, well, Run along now. I'll come up in a minute. Johnny, what's the matter with you? Well, uh, there's a man coming from the office. He'll be here in a little while. I... I wanted to talk with him alone. Well, we've got more than one room. I'll stay upstairs. You can talk to him down here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to him here. Sue and Tommy, upstairs. Windows and doors all locked. The lights out. Okay. Let him come. <laughs> Come on, open up. Don't move, Smiley. I've got a gun sticking right in your back. Are you Forbes? I'll talk to you tomorrow. Why not now? You're drunk. How do you know? Now, come on, give us both a break. Get going. Did Mona tell you I was coming? I'm not kidding. Get moving. And stay away from here. You better call the police. I just killed a man. Oh, it's you. Who were you expecting? Smiley, maybe? Maybe Johnny Forbes? Get out of here, MacDonald. You don't mean that, Mona. I'm here to help you. There's been a shooting. What are you talking about? I sort of expected it would happen. I've been sitting in my car listening to the short wave. Police calls. Get out. You don't believe me, do you? Got a radio? Turn it on. I'll give you my word. If anything's happened to either one of them, I'll see that the police get the whole story on you. What did I do? You gave Smiley the gun. Who says so? He says so. Anyway, don't you think they can trace it to you? Not unless they're a lot smarter than they were when I was on the force. Who are you calling? The cops. You want to talk to them? Operator, give me police headquarters. No. No, wait. Now, take it easy. I'm your friend like I always said I was. Hello? Lieutenant Howe, please. You see, Mona, all it said on the radio was code three. That means a homicide. But who's dead, Smiley? Johnny? Maybe even Johnny's wife. So there's no use... Uh, Frank? Frank, this is McDonald. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, fine. Say, I, um, I was just driving down Bradner Drive, 5400 block. Saw a big commotion over there. What? Oh, a prowler. Anybody hurt? Oh, no, no. Just thought there might be something in it for me. Thanks, Frank. Smiley. He's dead, all right. How do you like that Johnny Forbes? He told the cops Smiley was a prowler. What happened to Johnny? You'll read about it in the papers tomorrow. You know, it's funny. I didn't figure it'd work out this well. I thought they'd just throw a scare into each other. Imagine Johnny killing him. You'd think he'd have more sense. Smiley wasn't a bad guy. He never hurt anyone, really. He didn't hurt anyone. He didn't help anyone. He wasn't anything. He was a nice guy. That wasn't enough. For who? Me. People are born to have certain things. Smiley didn't have the nerve, and Johnny Forbes didn't have the chance. 
So it's me you end up with. Pack your things, Mona. Best thing you can do now is to get out of town. You and me. I think we'll spend a few days in Reno. You like gambling, Mona? I'm a great gambler. What's more, I'm a lucky gambler. Look at tonight, for instance. A thousand to one shot, I'd get rid of them both at once. Oh, you'll forget about Smiley in a few days. You don't think so now, but you will. And you'll realize the only reason I did all this was because I love you. That's why I... Mona, you... You'd better give me that gun. Mona, don't be crazy. You'll... Mona, you should... I think we have all the information we'll need for the moment. Yes, Lieutenant. There'll be a few routine questions, so keep yourself available for the coroner's inquest. All right. Thanks a lot. You've been very cooperative. Oh, we're leaving now, Mrs. Ford. Better have somebody board up that window. Johnny, I know how terribly you must feel about this. But the important... is that you weren't hurt. It could have been so much worse. Try to forget about it, dear. Please try. I... I'll fix you a cup of coffee. Sue. Sue, I want to talk to you. I gotta get this off my mind or I'll go crazy. The man I killed tonight, he... He wasn't a prowler. I knew he was coming. Johnny. That's why I wanted you and Tommy out of the house. He had good reasons for wanting to kill me, Sue. Better reasons than I had for killing him. Well, why should anyone want to kill you? Because... Because of his girl. I met her on a case a couple of months ago. She was the one who phoned. She told me he was coming here. What about this girl? The man, he... He got out of jail today. Somebody told him a lot of things about... About her and me. Were they true? Yes. I don't know what I can possibly say. I can't give you any explanation. I've wanted to tell you. I, I've tried. I... Sue, say something. Please say something. I can't go on with this on my conscience. Conscience? You make it sound like a dirty word. You're all worrying about your filthy little conscience. But I've got my son to think about. I have thought about that too and ended up by covering one lie with another lie. I wanted you to know before I... before I went to the police with the truth. The police? No, Johnny, no. You're not going to the police. You lied once. It came easy enough for you then. You've got to lie now. I mean it, Johnny. If you drag this family through the dirt, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> Good morning, Maggie. Mr. Forbes. I... I was just reading about it in the newspaper, Mr. Forbes. Yeah, I, uh... I guess we had all the additions. I didn't think you'd be in today. Oh, uh, there are a couple of men from the district attorney's office waiting for you. Thanks, Maggie. Mr. Forbes? Yeah? You're from the district attorney's office. Yeah, I know. A couple of questions we'd like to ask you about last night, Mr. Forbes. Look, I, uh... I've decided to make a full statement on the case. There are quite a few things I didn't tell the police last night. I'd like to see the district attorney. Sure, Mr. Forbes. Let's go. You told me that when Smiley came to your home for the first time, you chased him off. But when he came back, when he broke the window, I saw he had a gun. I... I had to kill him. Not if you'd called the police in the first place. I've explained why I felt I couldn't do that. Explain. Makes a lot of sense now, doesn't it, Forbes? Well, your story all checks. Your statement, the report of our investigators, 
The statement Miss Stevens gave us. Miss Stevens? She's been here? She's here now. Upstairs. Under arrest. For what? That depends on McDonald. She shot him. If McDonald dies, it's one thing. If he doesn't, it's another. Oh. Can I uh, talk to her? Nobody can talk to her. Personally, I think we've got the wrong person in the cell upstairs. But there's nothing I can do about it. It so happens the homicide you committed was justifiable. Smiley was coming to kill you. But just one little phone call to the police, and you could have avoided all this mess. But no, you kill a man. And that's not a pleasant thing to live with for the rest of your life. Or don't things like that bother you? Get out, Forbes. Go on. Get out. Over here. Sue, how did you know where I was? I phoned the office. Johnny, get in the car. Johnny, I, I'm taking Tommy out of school. I suppose that's best. How much does he know about everything? You can't expect to keep too much from a child of his age. I, I think you should ask Ed for a transfer to some other town. Are you uh, sure you don't want a divorce, Sue? I've thought about it. There's no use kidding you. I've thought about it a lot. And I'd almost made up my mind. And then I got to thinking. If a man has always been a good husband, except for 24 hours, how long should he be expected to pay for it? I don't know, Sue. I suppose some people would say forever. I'm not sure it'll ever be the same. Not for a long time, anyway. But we've weathered other things. Maybe we can handle this. That is, of, of course, if, if you want to try. Of course I do. All right, Johnny. That's what we'll do, then. We'll try. Now, here is Frank Brzee and our star. Elizabeth Scott, thank you for joining us again on our show and for a fine performance in our radio adaptation from the film Pitfall. Thank you, Frank. It's so nice to be here. You and Dick Powell are two of the stars from the original cast, aren't you? Yes, Frank. It was fun making the movie, and it's just as much fun doing this radio show. Well, I understand around the time this program was broadcast that you were one of the busiest actresses in Hollywood. Yes, it was around that time that I finished three pictures without a day off in between. Well, that can be a pretty hectic pace, but, but some of those Hollywood hunks aren't hard to take, are they? I'll say they're not. And as I recall, you worked with some of the best. Oh, God, yes. I worked with Humphrey Bogart, Robert Mitchum, Kirk Douglas... Michael Caine, yeah, and on and, and on. <laughs> and don't forget those two funny guys on the Paramount lot, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Oh, yes, we made the movie Scared Stiff. It was a laugh a minute. You also worked with one of the legends of show business, too. You mean Elvis Presley? I sure do. Oh, making the picture Loving You with Elvis was an experience I'll never forget. And an experience I'll never forget is having you as guest on our show. Thank you, Elizabeth Scott. Thank you for joining me for another production of the Radio Theater. This is Frank Brzee saying good night to you from Hollywood. Uh, uh, uh.